dear students today we'll have a detailed analysis of sam selvan's short story johnson and the casca jura this short story is originally written by sam selvan the complete name of the author is samuel selvan but shortly addressed as sam selvan he was born in trinidad in the year 1923 to indian parents and he was the sixth of uh, seven children for the whole family he also published his first novel a brighter sun in the year 1952 shortly after arriving in england and his most widely known work the lonely london is He wrote 13 books and two collections of plays. In the 1970s, he moved to Canada, where he remained until dying at the age of 70 during a visit to Trinidad. So this short story, Johnson and the Casa Casca Jura, has been authored by Sam Selvan. And this writer. Very documents uh, his experiences from an autobiographical point of view, being in uh, the place called Trinidad. This writer, John Sam Selvan, has documented the whole story from his uh, personal experience. So this writer, Sam Selvan, introduced. Uh, the narrator of uh, the whole short story johnson and casca jura by the same name of the author sam not selvan but sam sam is actually the narrator of the whole story johnson and the casca jura and this uh, short story appeared in a collection of short stories titled ways of sunlight It was published in the year 1957. Sam Selvan also wrote another story, "Those Who Eat the Casca Jura." So this story has been actually developed, taking elements from the short story Johnson and the Casca Jura. So uh, this is written, "Those Who Eat the Casca Jura." which seems to have had its uh, seed plot in Johnson and the Casca Dura. Now this is uh, a short story, a very beautiful uh, love story. It portrays the love affair between two characters, Johnson and Urmila. Johnson is actually a white man, but uh, Urmila is actually a descendant of uh, the indian tradition now it's actually a reunion of uh, both the western as well as the eastern cultures we could perhaps say so without uh, taking into consideration the racial segregations or discriminations it is also about the fulfillment of a native legend in trinidad so this is associated with the name casca jura Casca jura is a reference to a kind of fish, a okay, very tasty fish uh, found in the streams of uh, the place called uh, Trinidad. So Sam Selvan reconstructs himself throughout the whole story by appearing himself as the narrator of the whole story. He is named uh, Sam, and Sam explains the story in. the first person narrative to the readers now let us have a detailed analysis of uh, the major themes uh, occurring within the whole short story the short the, the short story is actually based on a legend which is titled the legend on the casca dura there is a belief that uh, this fish casca dura is consumed by people there's a possibility 
that uh, the people will certainly remain in the place called Trinidad forever. They cannot perhaps uh, return to any of, any of their native places or even if they return they will have to come back to their place called Trinidad. Cascadura is a reference to a small horny scaled fish found in the muddy flushes of streams. And Sam Selwyn documents the capturing of the fish Cascadura throughout the short story Johnson and Cascadura. And it is Johnson who managed to catch a lot of fish Cascadura throughout the whole play. And he managed to distribute it to many people that comes the who comes in comes on his way. But uh, what is uh, quite observable, noteworthy thing here is that uh, Johnson is actually a white man who has come from England. And uh, this man, he actually want, wanted to go back to his native place in England. And uh, as he wanted to go back, uh, if he cons consumes uh, Cascadura, this small horny scale fish, there's a possibility, as per the superstitious legend on the Cascadura, that he have to has to remain in his own in the place called the Trinidad. So those who eat the Cascadura will end their days in the island. So this was actually a kind of a superstition and a legendary practice people had blindly believed in the whole place called Trinidad. We also come to see another name to this uh, character, Johnson. He has been addressed uh, Gary. So his complete name is uh, Gary Johnson, who came to Trinidad to spend a holiday on his friend, Mr. Franklin. He has uh, owned an estate, Mr. Franklin's estate in Sangre Grande, a district some 20 odd miles from the port of Spain. So we have rough right now three major characters introduced here. The narrator, the author himself, who has appeared in the name of uh, Sam. He is also addressed as a boss by his laborers. And we have um, Gary Johnson, who is actually a descendant from England, who has uh, casually made a visit to Trinidad and his friend Franklin, Mr. Franklin, who is the owner of the whole estate, newly bought by him in Sangre Grant from 20 miles away from the port of Spain. The whole short story is narrated by the author, Sam himself, in the first person narrative. We can see that the author makes intrusions by way of uh, making references to the readers. So, in a, from a postmodern point of view, author intrusion can be noticed throughout the whole short story. That the author himself, so from an autobiographical point of view, and also as the narrator of the whole short story, communicates to the readers. So, Sam is also the narrator of the whole short story. Now, let us have a continuous uh, reference to the legend on the Cascadura. The legend is about the fish Cascadura. So, Johnson, as a foreigner, he would like to make a book. He is actually in the process of writing a book. And he would like to collect a lot of materials for uh, documentation in his book. So, his research is on the superstitious practices beliefs as well uh, the witchcraft practiced by people in Trinidad. So in order to fulfill this, uh, he collects a lot of information about various facts, uh, legendary facts uh, taking place in Trinidad. So this legend about the Cascadura so is actually one point of discussion in Johnson's search for the material for his book. So there are two ways to catch the Cascadura as explained by Johnson throughout the whole story. One is to dam the muddy area where you suspect they are 
and bail out the water and pick them up floundering in the mud. So these are actually processes uh, identified by Gary Johnson, a foreigner from England, to catch the fish cascadura. And the other way, the second way is to look for a spot where twigs and leaves and other odd debris float down and form an island near a calm part of the stream. So there are peculiar ways uh, that they could catch the fish cascadura because uh, cascadura is a very difficult fish that can be caught by people and it is also a fish which is very tasty for the natives of the land. So we find a, a we find a list of uh, mother characters. So the first and foremost character narrated here is um, the autobiographical sketch of uh, Sam himself, uh, who appears as the narrator of the whole story. So as a narrator, Sam is also addressed by the libraries of uh, the estate owned by Mr. Franklin. He is addressed as a boss. Because he is uh, the one who takes care of the whole estate and uh, the libraries should address him as the boss. So Sam is also the narrator, the author of the whole work, uh, short story, Johnson and Cascadura. And uh, we find him uh, as also an overseer of the whole estate owned by Mr. Franklin. Mr. Franklin is uh, a landlord and uh, we find uh, the narrator Sam who is always loyal to Mr. Franklin who is the owner of the whole estate. Okay, in a way, narrator Sam has been appointed as an overseer of the whole estate by Mr. Franklin. The narrator Sam is also referred to as an Indian. He has a lot of uh, uh, hereditary references to being identified as an Indian. So this is uh, the reference to his identity. Sam Selvan's uh, father's pa parents are also referred to belonging to the Indian tradition. So this has some autobiographical reference. The narrator Sam and uh, the actual author Sam Selvan's parents belong to the Indian origin. We find Sam observing his duties as an overseer and he was supposed to keep the estate working very smoothly and get the coca ready for the market. Sam is also portrayed as a villain because he is also in love with a character, an Indian woman who is, whose name is Urmila. So uh, we find a lot of characters who have an Indian tradition. So Urmula is referred as the most beautiful lady in Trinidad who has come to work in the whole estate owned by Mr. Franklin. Sam is uh, found to be the foreman of uh, Mr. Franklin's farm. He also keeps a lot of secrets. He is addressed as a secretive person because uh, he keeps the secrets of uh, Urmila and Johnson's uh, love affair from uh, the father of uh, Urmila, whose name is uh, Sukhdev. Sam was later betrothed to Urmila as a deathbed wish from Sukhdev. So these are some of the references to the narrator of the whole short story, Johnson and Kaskajiva. And uh, we get to know that uh, this character Sam is known but the author himself, he appears in the form of a narrator. And we have uh, other characters. The next important character is uh, Gary Johnson. Gary Johnson, as we come to know, is uh, known by his name Johnson, second name Johnson. But uh, Gary Johnson uh, is uh, one visitor in the place called Trinidad. He is originally a native Englishman come from England. Johnson's interest is uh, in writing a book based on superstitions and witchcraft. He is addressed as a very young man.
compared to Mr. Franklin, Mr. Franklin, who is the owner of uh, the whole estate. Gary Johnson uh, is uh, a man who is found to be very vigorous and active. Johnson hoped to get background material from the superstitious villages, having come over the place called Trinidad, for a book he was writing on superstition as well as witchcraft. Another very remarkable thing about uh, Gary Johnson is that he is uh, in love, in a love relationship with uh, the Indian woman addressed Urmila. We have the next important character, Mr. Franklin. Mr. Franklin owns an estate in Sangre Grande. This estate is actually a newly acquired one. So Franklin is addressed uh, to be a middle-aged with a gray, graying hair man. He bought the Coco estate by noticing an advertisement in the English newspapers. The advertisement goes likewise rich cocoa plantation in the West Indies for sale, owner retiring. So having noticed this advertisement, Mr. Franklin, as a landlord, wanted to acquire, wanted to purchase this uh, cocoa estate and he managed to do that and his friend Gary Johnson wants to make a visit for a short visit to the whole estate and the subsequent events are noticed throughout the short story. Mr. Franklin is found to be an ideal master and the landlord who helps in illustrating the binary opposites of the rich and the poor, the white and the colored, masters and servants, oppressor and oppressed. So we find uh, references to many of these binary opposites uh, throughout the whole story. There are representations of the rich people, there are representations of the poor class people, there are representatives of the white culture, there are representations of the marginalized people, the colored people, relationship of master and servants, people who are being oppressed by the oppressors. So we find a difference of many such characters throughout the whole short story in an interaction with Mr. Franklin, the ideal master as well as the landlord. There are also many other minor characters appearing throughout the whole short story. We find a character called Santoji, who is uh, the man behind the exorcist practices of uh, Obia. So there are peculiar traits found out the whole, throughout the history of uh, Trinidad. He has the capacity to convert uh, animals uh, especially during the night hours. Another minor character is reference to Chango. Chango, the old Indian watchman. So he is also very much interested in referring to many superstitious practices noticed in the Trinidad culture. One night he heard a rattle of chains as if dragged by some powerful animal. So all those document, docu, documents uh, or uh, statements predicted by Chango is actually subject matter for Gary Johnson to document the superstitious witchcraft practices uh, in a newly formed book. Another character is uh, Sida, a young Indian girl who began to work at a very early age. So she had, uh, had no kind of a formal education, she was actually working in the whole estate. Another very important character, not a minor character, but a major character is Urmila. Urmila is referred as the most beautiful Indian girl, who is actually about to be graced with her womanhood. So Urmila is in a love relationship with this white man, Gary Johnson. Urmila always addressed the, the white man with his, with his first name, Gary. So this was the favorite name that she wanted to address him. And Urmila's father is uh, named Sukhdevo. Sukhdevo wanted to marry her 
off to a rich merchant in the city. So they were having come to know the love relationship maintained by Ormella as well as Gary Johnson. He did not like their relationship. Okay, he actually wanted to marry her off to a, any other rich merchant in the city. So Sukhdevo is a very conservative of the traditions and customs of the society. We find Urmila's father was against the love affair between Urmila as well as Johnson. And we also notice the presence of many libraries in the whole estate. So another remarkable thing about Sukhdevo is that Sukhdevo wanted, uh, wanted her daughter Urmila to be married off to any rich merchant and uh, he was actually uh, trying to find a man and finally he met Sam the narrator as a suitable person who could marry his daughter Urmila. The whole uh, short story is uh, immersed with uh, many superstitions and witchcraft. So, a few of them are documented here. Johnson, as well as uh, in his interaction with uh, many other natives at Trinidad, they share a lot of superstitious practices. One reference is about uh, Papa Boys, a spirit who lurked in the forest and lured evil hunters away from beaten tracks so that they were lost for days in the jungle. So this is actually the story is narrated by people belonging to the culture. Another superstitious reference or witchcraft reference is to Sokuyans. So this is very difficult to pronounce. Sokuyans, which sucked your blood while you slept. And Ikakos is the place of uh, Sokuyans. And this is uh, this incident is revealed through the explanations from uh, Chango. To Johnson. So Johnson was uh, trying to document this uh, information for the construction of his uh, book on superstitions in Trinidad. And there are other references to balls of fire which appeared from nowhere and scared the people in lonely spots. And in order to escape from uh, this uh, vanishing balls of fire, so people had to put their sign of the cross in order to escape from uh, such a difficult Another uh, superstitious uh, practice is with regard to finding the egg of a corbu. So this is this incident is actually very much closely related to the love affair between Urmila and Johnson. So the love affair of Urmila and Johnson initially appeared as a rumor in between the libraries and the members of the estate. Urmala, naturally the most beautiful Indian girl in the estate, was infatuated with this foreigner, Gary Johnson. Her father, Sukhdeva, wanted to marry her off to a rich merchant. But Sukhdeva gets to know his daughter's, Urmala's relationship with this foreigner, Johnson. Sukhdevo is the father of Urmila. So Johnson was a young man. Urmila was at the age of merging into a graceful womanhood. So, so this, this was actually a matter of attraction for everyone. So Urmila, when uh, she is found with other people, she is actually considered to be a very serious lady who cannot, cannot be perhaps tricked into any kind of jokes. So she, if there are uh, some uh, references, uh, jokes cracked, uh, she will uh, very brilliantly escape from all those things uh, with her simple smiles. So once Johnson climbed on an immortal tree, so there is something superstitious about this tree. So this is a very difficult tree to be climbed on, but Johnson managed to climb on it to find some truth because a native informed Johnson that they could find the egg of a corbu. This corbu is actually a local, local name for a vulture. And if they find
find the egg of Corbio, this was supposed to be a lucky charm for them. And this uh, egg of a Corbio could be available on the top of the immortal tree. And uh, it was very difficult for Johnson to get down uh, as a means to escape from the whole immortal tree. And finally, it was actually an incident which took place uh, when Johnson was uh, together with Urmala in the forest. And uh, Urmala had to seek the help of uh, the narrator Sam in order to escape, in order to escape uh, Johnson from the immortal dream. So with the arrival of uh, the narrator Sam, so Johnson uh, escapes from the immortal dream by holding on to the wine. So we also find uh, the continuation of uh, many such superstitious practices uh, throughout uh, the culture of uh, Trinidad. In the whole short story, the main character is uh, Johnson himself, a white man from England, who is a friend to Franklin the land, land owner of the coffee plantation and uh, this man Johnson is a very friendly fellow since he blends in with the natives of the farm he helped the women while they were sorting out the coffee in the in the coffee plantation moreover he joined in some activities that were undertaken in the land for instance the traditional dances he was not socially prejudiced since he was free while around the local ladies and even the narrator Sam. This is evident as he confides in Sam, the Indian foreman, his romantic feelings towards Urmila. His main intention for coming to the West Indies was to do a research for his book, which was to be based on superstition. While on the plantation, he is portrayed as being social and helping more so to the girls uh, to an extent that he falls in love with Urmila. Urmila is referred as uh, Sukhdeva's daughter. And her being an Indian girl, uh, this is not taken well because culturally she is not supposed to be involved with a white man. So their relationship is viewed as an abomination. So Johnson is forced to go back his native place, England. So, in that case, uh, Urmula will be perhaps uh, quite exasperated. Uh, she is uh, found to be quite lonely in Trinidad. So, we find a lot of uh, observable things uh, in uh, the relationship between the characters, especially with the Sokdeo, the father of um, Urmula, and uh, Mr. Franklin. Mr. Franklin, you know, is the owner of the estate. Mr. Franklin is the land owner of the coffee plantation, whereas Sokdevo is the father of Urmila. And Urmila has been entrusted in the care and protection of uh, Mr. Franklin, the land owner. And one day Sokdevo makes a casual visit to the office of uh, Mr. Franklin, the landlord. Sukdevo invited Mr. Franklin for a christening ceremony the village for uh, Dulcie child. So this is actually a reference to a child owned by Dulcie. Now, Mr. Franklin was uh, supposed to remain as the godfather and Sukhdeva also informs Mr. Franklin about uh, the relationship of Urmula with Johnson. So Sukhdeva is not very happy with the relationship maintained by Urmula with Johnson, the foreigner. So there are a lot of warnings given to them and Mr. Franklin is uh, requested to take care of uh, Urmila, especially from the side of uh, the foreigner Johnson. So in a way, Sukhdeva was informed about uh, his wanderings made by Urmila with Johnson by Sukhdeva's own friend who is named Ramdin. Ramdin reported the information to Sukhdeva about Urmila and Johnson's uh, love affair as well as relationship. 
So this is actually uh, a time for um, the owner of the estate, Mr. Franklin, to give a reminder to his own friend Johnson, perhaps to not to see Urmula anymore, or uh, Johnson can perhaps uh, return to his native place. So before uh, Johnson leaves, Urmula prepares for him the famous uh, cascadura stew. It's a fish curry which is believed to make a person come back to the tropics no matter wherever he goes. Through his findings we are able to see the theme of a superstition being addressed. For example, Johnson climbed the immortal tree in search of uh, the vulture's eggs. Since the locals believed the eggs brought good luck to whoever owned them. Moreover, Franklin confirms to him that superstitious encounter one night when a ball of fire came out of nowhere and fell right in front of him. The next day when he went to check on the same spot he found no mark left by the ball of fire. Urmula also believes in the superstition that says those who eat the cascadura whenever they may wonder will end up in Trinidad. Okay. That is why she ensures that Johnson eats the stew so that he comes back to her. Johnson is friendly with the native so as to get information on his own anticipated book. So we find a lot of happenings of the short story as a, as a result of the relationship maintained by the characters. Now we find this uh, fulfillment of uh, the Cascadura legend. Okay. So Urmila kept a wire bowl wrapped in a white towel in her hand with her uh, Cascadu or Cascadura curry for Gary. Gary is known but uh, Gary Johnson, the foreigner from England. So Cascadu is actually the local name for the fish. And there, there is a legend about, uh, about taking Cascadue curry because uh, one who takes it, uh, it is possible that uh, he could, he, she or he could end uh, her life uh, in the place called Trinidad. Okay, there is no going back from the place Trinidad. And Johnson was actually very much interested uh, about to get to know this Cascadue legend because of uh, the information required for the publication of the book, especially based on superstitions and witchcraft. We find um, at the end of the story, we find that uh, both Johnson as well as Urmila, okay, they are united in a married relationship say, according to Indian rights. But uh, there, is, there are some scenes uh, that uh, Johnson goes back to his native place called uh, England. And uh, there is a long waiting, a waiting of uh, more than two and uh, two or three years, uh, especially by uh, Urmila, in order to see the arrival of Johnson. Okay, it is, uh, at the end of the story we find that uh, both Johnson as uh, Urmila they are united, and they are they are being settled on the estate in a house uh, Mr. Franklin built for them. So. Uh, the superstitious practices are being continued. Urmila also consulted the local Obia man for a medicine to cure Gary's illness. So, when uh, Gary Johnson comes back from England, we notice that uh, Gary is actually found with uh, a kind of illness, a rare blood disease. Okay, so Urmila also wants to find some remedy for it. So, as a result, we find that uh, Sam, the narrator, wants to leave the whole estate because he is worried. He actually wanted to own Urmila, the beautiful lady, but uh, Urmila is in no way in uh, discussion for uh, or in the way of uh, Sam. So, Sam decides to leave the whole estate as an escape mechanism. So, when Sam leaves the whole estate, Mr. Franklin, estate offered him $300 with his next wage packet 
and a party is arranged by Mr. Franklin in honor of uh, Johnson because uh, he was uh, about to leave the whole estate in a cocoa house. So, so there are happenings uh, in this uh, slide. We discussed uh, so how Johnson had to leave the whole place and also the coming back of Johnson so as a result of uh, the fulfillment of the Cascadura legend. Johnson very often uh, mingled with the community very freely and he was uh, actually very much liked by all the members because uh, he was uh, actually writing a book about those people. But Sam to some extent can be portrayed as uh, being the villain since uh, he is also in love with Urmila. Sam the narrator is the foreman of uh, Mr. Franklin's farm. He was a hard-working worker as he saw that all the duties were performed. For example, he tells the girls to stop gossiping and continue their, with their tasks. He is also a very secretive person. That is, he knows of the character Urmila and as well as Johnson's affair with her, but keeps it, uh, keeps it as a secret to himself. So this is very evident when he does not answer. Mr. Sukdevo, when asked about it, if he knew the affair existed. So he is later a bit close to Urmila as a deathbed wish from Sukdevo, something that he fails to fulfill. So through this action, Samuel, uh, Samuel Salman illustrates the theme of uh, betrayal since he betrays Sukdevo's request of marrying Urmila. So Salman unfortunately does not show us the major role of Sam in the whole plot rather than just providing the theme of escapism and other roles that Mr. Franklin as a character would have also achieved. So we find that uh, there are no racial discriminations practiced within this uh, Trinidad story. So actually love surpasses racial boundaries. Urmila grows from a naive, naive girl to a woman her growth through positive, though positive for her, brings about rebellion and negative sentiments from people close to her, especially with her father. Though her defying the norm of the society, through her defying of the norm of the society, she sets a trend that will open other avenues to fight racial prejudice. But whereas uh, Franklin, the landlord, is also found to be very helpful in illustrating uh, the binary opposites of uh, the rich as well as the poor class people, the master servant relationships, etc. So we find that uh, he is a very kind and has a good relationship with his employees, especially when Sukhdevo is portrayed as a conservative man who keeps a lot of traditions and customs of the society. So Sukhdevo being Urmila's father, so he is very against the love affair between Urmila and Johnson. So in one of the incidents uh, taking place in the story, we notice that uh, Johnson makes a personal uh, statement to Sam, the narrator. So about uh, his relationship with uh, the Indian woman, Urmila. So he states, I love, sir. I love her, Sam. So this should be corrected. I love her, Sam. Okay. So Johnson leaves Trinidad and there is a gap of uh, two years and also additionally one more year is referred. The, the time period uh, referred there, uh, especially when Urmila waits for the arrival of uh, Johnson. So for Urmila, Johnson is always addressed as uh, Gary and uh, Sam makes a lot of uh, references about the speculations of uh, Johnson's marriage with uh, perhaps white ladies in England. But uh, this lady, Urmila, always believed in uh, the legend because uh, it was uh, her duty to ensure that uh, the Cascadura dish has been taken by consent.
assumed by Johnson. So, in a way, Sam fails to win Urmula's love. And uh, Urmula's uh, expectations of uh, Gary's uh, return from England has been very much uh, documented by the writer, okay, Sam Selvan. Now, initially we find that uh, Sukhdevo is uh, found to be very ill, having ill health. And uh, before his death, uh, in the absence of uh, Johnson, Urmula makes a promise to marry Sam. So this is actually found to be a deathbed wish initiated. We also find that uh, immediately after the death of Sukhdevo, we find uh, the arrival of a letter from uh, Gary Johnson from England. And uh, in the letter, we read that uh, Johnson is also found to be very ill and she has been affected with uh, rare blood disease. So, his doctors has actually suggested, those physicians suggested Johnson to come back to the place called Trinidad and uh, leave his rest of his life it's because uh, the place might give him uh, some uh, cure for uh, his diseases. So herein we find that uh, there is a returning of uh, Gary Johnson from his native place, England. He is coming back to his own favorite estate, uh, estate in Trinidad, uh, an estate owned by Mr. Franklin. Okay. So herein there are a lot of uh, relationships uh, maintained, maintained in between Gary Johnson. Sukhdevo, the father of Urmila, and Sam, the narrator, who is known but uh, the author him, himself. So, we find a lot of themes uh, working within the whole short story. So, the short story is uh, abundant, immersed with uh, the themes of uh, superstition, themes of betrayal, themes of escapism, the theme of love which surpasses uh, racial boundaries or discriminations, the practice of the racial prejudice in Trinidad or uh, racial segregation. So people coming from immigrating from various locations, the theme of immigration and also the theme of uh, many other cultural practices like the Obia exorcist practice or uh, the practice of uh, different dance forms etc. So the character is portrayed in the whole story to a large extent develop the theme of a superstition and racial prejudice that existed in Trinidad at that time. Some characters, however, seem too good to be true, as in the case of Franklin, Mr. Franklin, the owner of the estate. The relationship between the master and servant has always been that of an oppressor as well as the oppressed. And Franklin is, however, brought out as an ideal master who can even stand accusations of Devo tells him that he trusted him, trusted Mr. Franklin to take care of his daughter, but he failed to do so. More so, Johnson, the character to some extent, acts hypocritically. He argues that he does not believe in witchcraft and superstition. But at the end of the whole story, we see him, he is convinced that the cascadura he ate before his departure might have contributed to him to his coming back to the place called that. So, with these themes, uh, Sam Sullivan celebrates uh, the whole short story, Johnson and Cascadio. Other important uh, themes uh, or references to the study of uh, the whole short story is uh, remarks on the use of language. Sam Sullivan is peculiarly noted for his uh, mixed use of uh, both the European language as well as the native expression, dialectical expressions of Trinidad. So this is uh, literally the indigenous uh, Trinidadian colloquial English that has been used. We find uh, no proper grammatical constructions uh, in the narratives spoken by the characters in the story. It is referred, we was just uh, talking about Mr. Johnson and Urmula. So these are some of the references. Uh, as an example for the Trinidadian local indigenous colloquial usage of English. 
he finds uh, happy finds to use uh, a mixture of both the standard english as well as the trinidadian dialect throughout the whole short story so this is as a result of uh, sam sel the author sam selvins uh, on uh, bringing up in the place called trinidad so this short story is referred to be taken from a collection titled waves of sunlight it mirrors the likes of the caribbean in trinidad as well as in london and immigrants get to assemble and integrate themselves into a foreign land there is a very important uh, local indian reference to roti in an italicized form written throughout the whole short story and the slapping image on a baking iron is uh, referred there as a characteristic of uh, the use of uh, language especially so gary johnson the main character is a white man from england so from gary johnson we can come to understand the standardized english form used throughout the whole short story so there are a lot of books available to us to refer to the dialectical style and fictional strategy employed by sam selvan so this book uh, authored by clement h wyke uh, is uh, quite helpful to get to know the contributions uh, given by sam selvan as a writer as a fictional writer and also the peculiarities found throughout his uh, mixed form of uh, standard english as well as the uh, trinidadian colloquial indigenous dialect used by the writer so there are a lot of uh, books available for study of uh, the works written by the author sam selvan and also second resources available to his credit so one peculiar note uh, is uh, to refer to the, the source of the short story written by sam selvan titled uh, johnson and casca dura this is actually taken from a collection titled ways of sunlight uh, which was published originally published in the year 1957 i'm very happy to share that a few of uh, the books are referred to are available both as a soft copy and also a hard copy available in our central college library so thank you very much for your kind and patient listening